Hello YouTube! <laughs> Welcome to another exciting episode of Cooking with Denoy out at Hut 2.0. Yeah! It's actually almost dark, nighttime. I'm going to be spending the night out here. Just uh, felt like getting away from the city and coming out of here into the wilderness. <laughs> to rough it out <laughs> at the hut. Anyhow, I am in process of cooking um, dinner. It is um, going to be, of course, white rice, which we're boiling up right now. And we're going to have some uh, thick pork chops. Yeah, is that cool or what? As you can see, I've added some more wood to keep the fire burning here while the rice is boiling up. Essentially, I'm waiting for it to stop boiling. I'm cooking it as if it was cooking in the rice cooker on the electric um, countertop, you know, the electric cooker itself. And what it does is basically when the water boils out, then the unit tends to shut down and go into warm mode. So what I do when I see that the water has boiled out, you know, out as steam through here, and the water's gone, pretty much. I take the whole unit off and set it aside and let it cool down. And when it does that, I'm going to open up the grill and put my um, my thick Walmart uh, pork loin center cut chops on there. Yeah, I think I think the the grill top here is big enough to cook both pieces of the um, pork chops. It was only two dollars and sixty three cents. How good is that? And of course, we're going to season it with just. Uh, chopped onions and um, the body of complete and some kikkoman soy sauce I don't even think I'll need the olive oil so we're not gonna we're not gonna fry it up so we'll just be uh, grilling it out here over an open flame and that is one of the benefits of having a, a little portable cooking unit like this is that you know I can cook out here virtually no cost because my fuel is just frond leaves and wood, whatever, you know, scrap branches and stuff I can find. And the fire, by being confined in this unit, is very much under control. So I don't set the whole forest ablaze here. But this is uh, one of the big reasons for making a, um, a, I guess, a portable cooking stove that I can uh, take with me and use out in the wilderness when, you know, when I'm completely off-grid. I'm... Um, able to just burn wood. It looks like the rice is indeed about done. The um, water has pretty much drained out. As you can see there's only a little bit of steam coming up. So I am going to be removing it off here in a minute. Less than a minute here. To add some more fuel which I probably shouldn't have. I'm going to go ahead and take the, the rice out and let it uh, finish, you know, cooking, warming up here on its own. You can see here, look at all that steam. Woohoo! The rice should be perfectly done. I am going to let this burn down just a little bit. Then what I will do is add the um, pork chops here. So, we're just kind of evening out the charcoal. I guess if there's one thing I've learned from my wife and viewers of this channel is try not to cook over a direct open fire, you know, when you're cooking meat and stuff. I did cook the rice over an open fire because we're just using the heat from the fire to um, basically heat up the water and boil it up. But as far as cooking the, the pork chops themselves, I don't think we want like a bunch of flames flying up on it and charring it as it's cooking. We kind of want it to cook a little bit slower. I'm going to move this over a little bit. So let me go ahead and get the, um, the pork chops ready. Getting the pork chops ready was just a matter of taking off the um, plastic wrap. And all we're going to do is just pour a little bit of the Kikkoman sauce on it. Then we're going to sprinkle it with the chopped onion and body of complete. And we're going to do it to both sides and then toss it up onto the grill and let it grill up. I am simply just going to pour a little bit of um, soy sauce. Whoop. 
and I'm just coating the food with the soy sauce. You see, I didn't even bother washing this because I don't have access to a lot of water out here. So I didn't bother washing it because we're going to be cooking it over an open fire anyways and making sure it's thoroughly cooked. So I got this side done. So what I'm going to do at this point is put the garlic, I mean the onion on it and the badia. So the first thing I'm going to do is sprinkle it with the, the chopped onions. This is pretty much the same stuff I normally cook in the rice cooker. But since I have access to the hut and access to this uh, portable stove that we made, I figure, you know, it tastes a lot better eating stuff that's grilled versus um, kind of fried in a rice cooker. The rice cooker is great when you're on the road traveling and you got to cook while you're driving or cook when you park somewhere, but being able to get out and actually cook it over an open fire like this, an open grill, it's like a hundred times better. So I am going to put that directly over that. And we're going to do the other piece just the same way. So I guess it's a matter of me arranging this so it doesn't, um, you know, we have room for two of them. There we go. I think we've got two nice chops on the grill. I am going to pour a little bit of um, soy sauce on it. Okay, some of you might be saying this is not a little, this is a lot. <laughs> and it is. Probably one of the reasons my blood pressure is so high. Alright. So I put soy sauce on it. Now it's a matter of sprinkling it with the um, chopped onion. Doesn't that look so good already? And some of the body are complete. I know it certainly smells good already. The only concern I really have with cooking out here is because the food smells so good, I could be attracting the um, skunk ape or the Florida panther because you know we are actually out here in the middle of um, the wilderness and the smell is just permeating everywhere so we're gonna let that cook a bit I might even put a lid on it and kind of let it hold the heat in and maybe I'll do that I'll get a lid and put it on it so it can kind of bake a little bit and then I'll come out and flip it in a moment so I've got my pan lid right here that we're just going to simply put it right on top. Although, I don't want to... What I don't want to do is block off the oxygen and have the fire burn out. That might be a little too big. Maybe I'll do it like that. Just to let it kind of trap the heat in there and cook a little bit better. Not sure if I want to add some flames. I might, I might put in another branch to get it to sear the meat a little bit. Or we may let it sit like this and cook, slowly cook. You know, it certainly is smelling really, really, really good. Doesn't that look good? It's been cooking on this side for quite a bit. Maybe about five minutes or so. I'm going to try to flip it and see how it's doing. Otherwise, I'm going to have to add more heat, you know, um, at a fire. Get the fire burning. It looks like it's cooking slowly. So you can, you can hear it, and I don't know if you can hear the sizzle of the meat cooking. It is cooking very slowly. I think I'm going to go ahead and, and throw in some more, um, cause a couple of little flames to come up by throwing in some paper and a couple more um, sticks just to start up a fire again. Because so I feel like it's not hot enough. So I'm going to toss this in here. This paper we used earlier. I'm going to just lay this wood underneath. As the paper burns, it starts to release more smoke, which is kind of bad. But I am going to blow on it here in a moment. And it causes a fire to light up when you do that. When you blow into that, that um, 
pot right there, what you're doing is feeding it a lot of oxygen, which helps the fire to come back up. So hopefully the fire will come up and these little sticks will um, catch. That way I can have some flames and have it kind of like charboiled. Oh, we got a little friend here. Yeah, it's one of the things is they, they do smell food. So you can see my little friend came out probably because he smells me cooking. <laughs> and he's running off right now into the woods. But he was coming right up to me until he saw that I saw him. Yeah, you know, this place gets all sorts of animals. We have like little boars come up. I haven't seen a panther yet, but I did see a um, a a lynx or a bobcat. One or the other. It was like a big cat. It, lo it looked almost like a house cat, but it was big. Like about two or three times the size of a house cat. So our little friend there has walked off. But they come here at night sometimes. I can hear them outside. You know, my first night out here when the um, armadillo was out here was kind of freaked me out because they were coming right up to the building and, and, you know, digging and clawing and scratching. So he must have smelled the food and decided to come check it out. But anyhow, let's look at our food here. Oh, man, the fire has burnt out, so I'm probably going to add some more um, paper towels in there to get it burning again. I have added some more paper and blue on it again. I got ashes all over my food here. Not good. <laughs> I don't really want ashes. I wanted it charred a little bit, but not ashed. So we're going to go ahead and flip the meat here and see what it looks like now that it's kind of seared a little bit. Get rid of the ashes that blew on it. I think it's looking pretty good. Nice and seared. And it looks like the um, the wood has caught on. So, flames are burning, which is what I want. I want it to just kind of char it a little bit. Not too much. A little bit. I'm going to add just a little bit more wood here. And go across that way. There we go. The idea is to have oxygen flowing between the, the wood so that it burns, otherwise the wood will not burn. So wood needs oxygen. It's about to burn out here. Gotta get it to catch and there's like trap gas in there, I think methane. It's methane that's trapped inside um, wood, you know, that's dried out and rotting. So we're searing the, the meat a little bit more. It's looking almost done. And I may add this, um, I don't think I need to add this last piece right here. I just need to move the flames. There we go, so that they burn. I get this other one to, to catch. So the piece of wood doesn't want to catch. So I'm going to take it back out and put it diagonal. But maybe it'll catch. There we go. So now we got the flames going. I think we're good. Searing the, the meat. Move my paper there. I don't want it to accidentally catch on fire. And I'm going to remove this meat off the heat here in a moment. I just basically wanted the flame coming up a little bit to crisp it up a little. And I may have a little bit too much flame here at this point. I'm going to take the food off before it burns, so let me get the stuff and, and get that off there. I don't know about you guys, but this is looking really good to me. Doesn't that look good? Pork chops out here at the hut. Mmm, looks so good. Smells so good. 
Smelled so good it brought out Mr. Armadillo. As you can see, I've uh, taken the pork chops off the grill, so now we're gonna try to cut it open and make sure it's fully cooked. And then I'll go ahead and get the rice ready and prepare the um, hot pepper sauce to eat with it. A quick slice down the center of each piece of pork chop shows that it is white all the way through. So the meat is fully cooked. So I'm good. I'm not going to eat raw pork. That would be very dangerous. But you can see the meat is indeed not red inside. It is white, so it is fully cooked. So we're going to go ahead and get the rice to serve with it and prepare the um, pepper sauce. And that look good already. For my pepper sauce, I am going to use two serrano peppers, a little bit of uh, lemon juice, and some what's left of my lucky fish sauce. Yeah. So we're just going to chop up the peppers, add the fish sauce and the lemon sauce, and the, the, the pepper sauce is done. The pepper dip. As you can see, I've chopped up the serrano peppers. Now we're just going to add some soy sauce, I mean um, some fish sauce. Squirt it right in there liberally. I think I'll use it all up. This is the last. And my lucky fish sauce. I'm going to have to try to get some more. And our lemon. Squeeze the lemon on there. And this is the last of the lemon, too. Maybe a little bit of lemon left. That's the last of the lemon, too. So I'm going to need uh, more lemon and more um, Lucky Fish Sauce. But this is my pepper sauce, and now it's time to eat. Here then is what our finished meal looks like. And I'm serving it with Mountain Dew, even though I really should not be drinking soda. But I couldn't resist, you know. Um, it's been a rough week. I am out here in the woods just trying to chill. And a little Mountain Dew won't really hurt too badly. I'm going to take a piece of the pork. Piece. Let's try a piece of the um, the pepper right here. I'll go with two pieces. A bit of the sauce. And here's our first bite. Oh my goodness. Mmm. This food is so delicious. As you can see, the, um, the ingredients weren't too many. Uh, pretty easy to cook, the pork. Just some um, chopped onions and the badia and some soy sauce. If you don't have a grill, you can fry this up. But I think it tastes better. It seems like almost anything you cook over an open grill tastes a lot better. So I'm really grateful to have this and the ability to cook out here. I have put some water on this to kind of burn it down a little bit. You can see the embers are still there. I'll probably put it inside the hut and let it finish burning out here. And it can warm up the air in here because it is kind of cool out here today. But yeah, this is delicious. I thank you all for joining me today. I hope you are staying nice and warm wherever you are and eating well. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Um, even if you don't, give it a thumbs up anyways. <laughs> Share the video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, you know, if, if you really enjoy this channel and the content that's being produced on here, please go ahead and share it um, on social media and stuff to help the channel grow. I do appreciate you all, and uh, thank you for uh, being on this journey with me for so long and basically keeping me going up until this point. Hopefully, um, we're in a, on the second half of the hur hurdle here to try to get my life back in order. Until next time, everyone, take care of yourselves. God bless you all. Please stay safe. Bye-bye now.